my daughters are going to watch this because you have become their new hero. And I can assure you that my four-year-old and my two-year-old daughters will not change in front of biological men. This is ridiculous. I don't care what party you are a part of. If you think that we're all equal and the same biologically, you've literally lost your mind. Many of my colleagues on the left like to discuss gender-affirming care and claim that puberty blockers and hormone therapy and sex reassignment surgery are the only ways to treat gender dysphoria. Once a child expresses a feeling of gender dysphoria, instead of questioning the root cause of that feeling, that child will more likely than not be on a fast track to gender reassignment surgery, or otherwise known as genital mutilation. But I want you to imagine something. What would happen if we affirmed every thought that our children have? I'd like to show you a food pyramid. Now I know what you're thinking. This is not the FDA's approved food pyramid, although many of you probably wish it was. This is the food pyramid according to my four-year-old and my two-year-old daughters. And by the way, in the Hunt House, we don't do Ben and Jerry's. It's Blue Bell only. If my children had their way, they would have ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and for every single meal in between. Oh, the wisdom of children. But in a sane country, we know that children are mature enough to make adult decisions that will impact the rest of their lives. That's why we have parents. Children cry for ice cream, but as parents, we have the wisdom to know that ice cream is not in their best interests, particularly their long-term interest. I want to thank my parents, Willie and Diane Hunt. They had three children. All three of us went to West Point. All three of us served our country. All three of us earned multiple master's degrees from Ivy League schools. Do you know why? Because my parents did not give in to the thoughts of an adolescent, Wesley Hunt. I am a United States congressman because my parents didn't listen to me when I was eight years old. They raised us. They cared for us. They taught us the ways of being successful people. As an adult, you can do whatever you want with your body and with your own money. You're mature, you're fully grown, you can make adult decisions. I'm a combat veteran. I fought for the right for you as an adult to make your own decisions, but in my opinion, children are a different story. It is our obligation to protect them. When it comes to gender dysphoria in children, many in the American medical establishment have absolutely lost their minds. A child will tell their parent they have thoughts of gender dysphoria, and the parent may take that child to a doctor. But the doctor, instead of questioning the root cause of the dysphoria, will instead affirm the child's thoughts and proceed with gender-affirming care. But as many as my colleagues on the left want you to believe, there isn't widespread agreement on how to treat gender dysphoria. I can assure you that child mutilation is not the answer. In fact, in Finland, Sweden, France, Norway, and the UK are reversing course and asking questions. In the UK, their only national gender clinic for children shut down last year by court order. What do their doctors know that our doctors don't? I'm sorry we're here right now. And when my two daughters work hard in the sport, work hard in their craft to be the best that they can be amongst other women, they will compete against other women. I owe Victoria and Olivia and every other young lady in this country that. If you think I'm wrong, I am not the problem. I can assure you. We have an opportunity in this country to get this right in 2024 so we can stop all of this foolishness. But I cannot thank you ladies enough for bringing this up. I apologize that we live in America when this is happening. But thank God for the American spirit fire and thank God for brave women like you because it's brave women like you that are going to turn the tide so that future women won't have to suffer in the same way that you have. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. I yield back the rest of my time. Ms. Scanlon, we just heard my Democrat colleague, Mr. Cohen, say that your circumstance could have been fully resolved if we'd have just had some barriers up in the, sh- in the women's showers. 
Do you think that that's a sufficient way to resolve what we're dealing with here? I think by um, Representative Cohen admitting that we need barriers acknowledges there are biological differences between men and women. And by acknowledging that we need to have private spaces that are separate from each other, why can't we just use the locker rooms that we've always used, the men's and the women's? If you're acknowledging that we need protection and privacy from these men, then you're acknowledging that the locker rooms we've always used are the correct ones. My next question is for uh, Shannon Minter. Are you familiar with the changes in law recently in Washington State regarding transgender youth? Uh, yes. And uh, as I understand it, it used to be the case in Washington State that if a youth showed up at an emergency shelter, there was a legal requirement to notify the parent within 72 hours in the absence of some abuse or neglect. Is that your understanding of what the law was then? I believe that is correct. And then the law changed where now in Washington state, if someone shows up to one of these shelters who's a minor uh, and says that their parents don't agree with them changing their gender, that the shelter no longer has to notify the parents within 72 hours and can instead notify a government authority. Do I have that right? The parents will be notified. There's no question about that. This simply allows for a delay in order to allow them to investigate to make sure this child is going to be safe. There's no question that the parents will be notified. How long should parents have to wait not knowing where their child is while a government process is playing out to make a gender determination? There's no reason to treat these situations with transgender young, pe young people who may be in danger or at risk of abuse at home any differently than we would treat any other child where we have reason, reasonable basis to worry about that and to investigate that. But it does a short, treat them A short delay to protect the safety of young people is always warranted. But how long is the delay? How long do you want a parent not knowing where their kid is because the kid says they want to change their gender? Just tell me how long a delay is you, you think is appropriate. I want authorities to treat these kids with the same care they treat all other children. No, but but it, that's, will be a, it will be a short delay and the parents will be notified. Hold on, though, notified. because... Well, you, you won't tell us how long a delay. So if you're watching this, just imagine you're that parent and you don't know where your child is. And the law now says there's a 72 hour period where the shelter has to notify you. And that 72 hour period for any child of any gender or any circumstance is a period to investigate whether there's abuse in the home. But beyond that, beyond 72 hours, you got to tell the parent. And so it's, it's really important to understand here what the uh, proponents of radical gender ideology want. They want to stand between a parent and a child on these important decisions. And I don't think it's abuse if a parent says, I'm not going to get my child gender blockers. And, and it's odd to hear you advocate for the law because just moments ago in testimony, you said, and I wrote it down, parents have a fundamental right to make health care decisions regarding their children. But, but if in Washington state today, the parent makes the decision that they're not going to provide that gender affirming care, what it does is it unlocks for the government a window of time to keep the child away from the parent and to not tell the parent where the kid is. Oh, please get over yourself. What, you know, what, what's terrible is when you have, uh, this, this incongruent desire of the government to restrain the ability of parents to parent. And I, I can only imagine the terror that a parent must go through not knowing where their child is. So um, I think that's really challenging. We've also seen in the state of Alaska, Title IX, which was established for girls' sports to be used as a justification to socially transition a child against their wishes. Ms. Scanlon, as a beneficiary of Title IX, as a female athlete, do you think Title IX should be used in that way? Absolutely not. Um, swimming did a lot of really good things for my life after I'm a, a, a sexual assault survivor and swimming was one of the only things that I had to keep me going when I was struggling with that. 
and to think about young girls that are not going to be given those same opportunities because Title IX is being reworked and rewritten for these new people that have different definitions of what a woman is. Yeah, I'm against, I'm against transitioning children against the will of their parents, and I'm against transitioning Title IX away from an asset for women's sports Mr. through this Chairman. strange social justice cause that is deeply misguided. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Mr. Gentlemen. Chairman, I'd seek unanimous consent to introduce into the record.